This season, they started something pretty cool here in Bolivia um, to get people to the further places uh, untouched, completely untouched. I mean, this place is untouched in, in most people's perspective, but now they're taking you to places that's possibly never been fly fished before. Um, which, which can I mean, obviously gets any fly fisherman excited uh, when, when there's possibility that you're the first one casting a fly to a fish that's never seen a fly before. We are here in the Heli Fishing Exploratory trip. That's our first season here. And, and the idea is to, to check, to fish, to explore the headwaters of, of our basin. The places were unspoiled in nearly every pool we caught some fish. The option of Utah chopper, what is a game changer for the fishing. Even after 10 weeks, we are discovering new spots, new rivers, and the fishing is unbelievable. It's crazy. Back in Bolivia again, uh, absolutely one of my all-time favorite places to come fly fish. Um, in the world, probably top three destinations for me. Um, the transition is insane when you leave the city of Santa Cruz, coming to the jungle, the, just the landscape how it changes from a complete urban jungle all the way to this uh, completely untouched remote jungle setting. I mean, people say they've fly fished in the jungle. This is as jungle as you can find. As soon as we hear that they start a helicopter operation here at Tsiname, the Plume Lodge, uh, we get excited and decided to come here to fish this place. And um, the opportunity with the helicopter is that we could reach four or five different rivers and uh, we fish places where we never have fished before. Yeah, the Eli program, um Every day, flying to different rivers. Um, the rivers are obviously well rested. Some of them never been fished before. The fish behave accordingly. Uh, they've never seen flies. So you can just imagine, picture yourself catching 20 to 30 fish a day. Um, 20 pound plus fish, paku, uh, that don't behave like paku. They're dumb. <laughs> they eat flies, um, so. We hook the palometer of the jungle. <laughs> a paku. It's insane. I mean, the things you see apart from the fishing, it's the tapir, um, the bird life, jaguar tracks every single day. Um, the sounds, again, it's just so much to take in that it's, it's hard to put in words. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, one of the true special places in the world. Toy park just in front of you. Oh, looks like an elephant. When we are fishing, we had to be like hunters too. Mm -hmm. We had to go slowly, no noise. don't make noise, get in a good distance, not too close. So all those things, small details, that all together make then difference. make difference. The, the fishing is, it's a big balance of like technical fishing versus going to war. Um, you're fishing nine weights, it's pretty technical, the rivers, it, it screams technical, but then you're fishing for a golden rado, which is ferocious, very forgiving in a lot of uh, in a lot of ways. These are probably jaguar trucks. They are everywhere, but we don't see them. Probably they see us. <laughs> they are there in the bushes. Often you'll be approaching a little run and. You see these gold bars just laid up, and so all you have to do is really get the fly a couple of feet in front of them, be really quick to react. First, second strip, the fish will react. Sometimes they jump over each other to eat the fly. Um, and when you, when you hook the fish, the other fish will try to eat that fish. So it's just an absolute chaos. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Around it. Woo! Oh, 
But this was a hard fighting fish and it's a big boy. <laughs> oh, so lucky, all these rocks. Goodbye, my friend. This fish is it's pretty much a big head with a little body and a pretty amateur tail. So this fish is designed to eat sabalo. Um, we th throw flies like three, four, five inches, you know, but they really eat bait fish this big. Ah. <laughs> a eel. A eel. So small fish eat that long eel, huh? They can eat big things. Putting a fly in front of them, uh, you see that big mouth come up and just engulf the fly. It's really hard to, to put it in words how aggressive these fish can be. Just by looking at the fish, it is built to kill shit. Yeah, as far as fishing goes, it's one of the, hands down, one of the coolest fish you can catch with a fly rod. The lion get stuck in the rocks and they want, the fish want to run, so we lost it. But it happens and it's fun too. Sometimes they have to win, you know? <laughs> we cannot win every time, it's not as boring. My fly looks more like, uh, no, it's completely fucked now. You cannot fish anymore. It looks like a brush, like a toilet brush. <laughs> the heli is, is, is so unique and cool in the sense that you get in a helicopter every day and the landscapes you see, you know, you're covering mountainous areas, you're flying down the rivers. Um, so you're just covering a lot of ground and you're taking in a lot more um, than what you would on foot. So there's ups and downs to both, but I think the heli gives a uh, a whole, other, a whole other dimension to, to Bolivian jungle fishing um, and the experience. So um, I think it's, it's one hell of a program they've got going up. Now after these six days I have to say that I enjoyed every moment, I enjoyed the nature and I enjoyed fishing. Maybe it, it was the best fishing I ever had and uh, sure I will soon come back to do it again.